Broadly speaking, most funds are not using on-chain data to trade. I think of, of, of looking at things like developer activity selling or insider trading in markets are interesting just to like understand, you know, hey, what, what activity is going on, right? If we're looking at X or Y or Z asset, you know, are the developers selling out of those assets? Are early holders selling out of those assets? I think things like that are interesting. You know, I think some of these these broader metrics or these longer term metrics that, you know, kind of get thrown out on Twitter that look like a bunch of rainbows. You know, I don't know how much utility there necessarily is there. I mean, I think, you know, across any type of data, I think there's a misconception that like, like people just look at the stock to flow model as being this perfect thing. But like across all of data, I think I think it's, you know, you have to look at, at data together. I think data as a standalone is very difficult. So I think on-chain data becomes a lot more interesting when you combine it with things like, you know, market data and sentiment data and news and all these other metrics to kind of craft a, a much bigger and broader narrative. And I think there's some, you know, systematic models that you can you can build on that front that are interesting. So we spent a decent amount of time looking into this kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, for the most part, we find that it's, uh, there, there are like sparing examples, uh, uh, there are sparing exceptions to this, but for the most part, it's uh, basically useless to us. In addition to most of the information not being helpful in, in an inherent way, uh, people are like, uh, bad at interpreting it for the most part. The thing to note about a lot of these wallet address labeling things is like, you know, I've talked to a lot of the big OTC desks and big players in the space that have just taken their clients' wallet addresses and run them against a lot of these labeling. And certainly some of them are somewhat accurate, but in a lot of times, you know, maybe you're talking about one of the 20 wallet addresses that this fund has, and maybe the wallet address that's labeled is 1% of the fund's assets and they can mess with the market by moving around funds that are represent 1% of their assets, right? So I think you have to be careful with any of that stuff. It seems like a common theme here is that most people tweeting about on-chain data are, are probably wrong uh, at least 50% of the time, uh, which is, I mean, I don't disagree with that at all, but it's fun to hear it, you know, said unanimously and out loud.